Hopefully your derivatives of exponential functions went well. In order to finish out this particular section, we also have to find derivatives of logarithms. Now there's some rules that you've had in your past that I need to talk about because they do come into play. Uh, one of those is when you have log of a quotient. If you remember, you can separate and take the um, log of numerator minus log of denominator. It makes the pro some of the problems a whole lot easier. We've used two already. Do you remember back when we were doing our E, the uh, continuous compounding? Uh, we were able to free out the exponent. So if I have a log of a value raised to a power, I can bring the power out front as multiplication. That's my power rule. This is called change of base rule and will probably be applying in this particular section number one and number three. Change of base, you take log of number, I call this number because I take it numerator, and I divide it by log of base because base to me goes bottom. I, I like using letters like that. I'm going to use n derive again to sort of give you an, an uh, you know, a not exact way, but to see that yes, it does work way type feel. If we were in the other calc class, then we would be using the difference quotient to you know come up with these formulas, but we're not. We're in this one, and we're just going to find how to find derivatives of, of logarithms. Uh, let's see. So I've got a logarithmic function. Here I ask the calculator for the numerical derivative. This is another way you can type it if, you see, I type this in Y1 and then I ask the calculator to put that here. If you'll just go to Y1 and do N derive, uh, natural log of X, comma X, comma X, and in Y2 put in 1 over X. I'm saying this right here is my derivative of natural log. Going to second graph for table because I'm very interested in Y2 and Y3. If you'll notice, they are the same thing. So that means the derivative of, if I have a function Y equals natural log of X, it's 1 over X. I've got two rules. The first one we use more than the second one, but the second one does appear. Uh, if you'll notice in log rule 1, you have to have LN for this to work, LN. Um, I'm going to show you how to go about it. You might find after a while you've done enough of these, there's a pattern, but I'm going to use this rule as is. Now if you'll see I've got my constant, there's my constant, times I have a fraction bar. Now what I'm going to be asking you to do is I need you to tell me what or who is g of x. And once you tell me who g of x is, I'm going to ask you, well, what is g prime? Because if you can do that, then really I've got myself a formula here and it's fill in the blank. I'm going to put g prime in the numerator. I'm going to put g in the denominator. Now, another thing to remember, if, if you see ln, there's going to be a line. Think of l-i-n-e, ln you will have a quotient. Now I want to look at log rule 1 for a couple of examples and then I'll come back to log rule 2 in just a second. It looks sort of similar but I'll be back. I see ln so log, run, log rule 1 applies. My g of x, g of x is the thing after ln. How easy is that? So g of x is after ln so my g of x is x squared in order for me to apply the formula, not only do I need g of x, but I need g prime. So g prime would be 2 over x. Gagamagget, 2x. Sorry about that. So let's see. So here's my g of x. Here's my g prime. Let's see what else I say here. Ah, of course. Use the formula. Here's my formula. Now my constant is 1, so I don't have to worry about it. So g prime is 2x, g of x is x squared. So I put 2x over x squared, clean up. Pull up my calculator. I'm checking this thing out. 
So let me clear out that one. And I'm going to put in what I say the derivative is. 2 divided by x. This just happened to be from the last section. If you cursor over right on top of your function, then you can type in your yours. So natural log, I want x squared. And I've got to delete some of this other stuff until I get to my comma. Because I need n derive my original function, comma, x, comma, x. Second table. There you go. It's great to have a check. So since y1, y2 are equivalent, then this f prime of x is equal to 2 over x. And that's my derivative. And we got it right. All right, let's look at the next one. I see ln again, which applies my first rule. I see a 7, so the 7 is going to be my constant. I have to hold on to that. The thing after ln here is g of x. All right, so I've got g of x is equal to the x cubed minus 8x. But because of the formula, I have to go get g prime. Guys, I'm sorry. Well, maybe not. This is old. We've done this. So now for me to use the formula, plop in where it needs to go. I've got 7 on top is going to be 3x squared minus 8x. On the bottom is going to be x cubed minus 8x plus 15. So if you'll notice, I go back to the very first one, plop things in where they need to go, and then if I've got a number up front, I just, it, you always multiply numerator, because technically that's 7 over 1. That's it. Okay, I see another ln, which means I'm going to use log rule 1, but notice I've got a fraction bar here. This is where knowing your logarithm, logarithmic rules help a whole lot. Uh, this is number 1 that I had earlier. Let me go back up there. If I have log of a quotient, I can separate as a subtraction. So if I can separate this, then I sort of get these things um, divided so that I can conquer them just a little bit easier. So that's all I did. So natural log of numerator minus natural log of denominator. Now this puts me back to log rule 1. This is going to be, and I've got two terms, so I've got to do them separately. So this is going to be my g of x. I've got to go get g prime. And I don't think I have enough room on the paper that I did that. But why don't you go do that, put it to the side, put it in the formula, and see if I put uh, 6x over, you weren't supposed to see all that, 6x over my g of x. So let me scoot it down. There's the first one. Okay, there's my g of x. Then I put my derivative right there, minus, okay, this is my g of x, go get g prime. Now in both situations, directly in front of ln is 1. So you see I don't have to worry about the constant in that, with ra that respect. So on these problems, knowing the formula, do enough of these that you know where the things need to go. That's the easiest thing. So g prime is over g. That's what that says, g primes over g. Now I've got example 4 here in order for us to look at log rule 2. 1 only use, is for uh, ln. 1 is only for natural log. So rule 2, this is another old law. You have to use change of base. So I have to get it back to something I've done, which means I've got to get it back to the natural log. So I take natural log of number, remember it goes numerator, natural log of base goes bottom. I pull the base out. Guys, 1 over natural log of a number is a constant. This, 1 over natural log of b is now going to be c. That's why it's just brought over and repeated. If I wish I could cover this up with my hand, but I can't. Uh, notice this g prime of x over gx. It's the same thing. So this is a constant. This is actually the same formula. I got it back to a form that I could apply log rule 1. 
So this is going to be natural log of x over natural log of 5 and pull out the denominator. You've got to see the constant. Remember the issue that I kept fussing about in the last chapter? I need to see the constant out there. Pull it out. Now let's see what we've got. This is my constant. This right here is considered my g of x, so g prime would be 1. I should have 1 over natural log of 5 times 1 over x plus 12x squared. 2 is a constant term, and it drops out. So let's see if I wrote these down. There's my constant. Remember, get your uh, g of x. Put g prime over it, which is what I did right here. I got the derivative of that 4x cubed, and the derivative of the constant is 0. Then, normally what I do, and this is just me, my habit, we can't, uh, it's not natural log of 5x. Natural log of 5 is a constant. It's a number in itself. It is really to your advantage if you'll move that variable just in front. Remember, 2 times 3 is the same as 3 times 2. So just move the variable up front, and that will keep you from trying to multiply 5 times x, which they can't be. Okay? So these are... Um, this is how you go about finding the derivatives of, uh, net of logarithms. So I need you to practice. If you have issues, let me know. Okay? Uh, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.